Hello everyone. It's Groundhog Day today, but I'm not really going to talk about that since the whole notion of a rodent forecasting the weather is patently ridiculous. Instead, I'm going to talk a little bit about teleportation, a, a staple of science fiction and fantasy uh, storytelling. Uh, now, I don't have an issue with teleportation in a fictional setting. Um, in fantasy, magic can do whatever it wants, so teleportation is fine. And in a science fiction, science fantasy uh, setting, well, some magical future technology could allow for it. Or some magical physics we don't know about could allow for it. Same way faster than light travel uh, can be accepted in such an environment. Uh, now, the real question is, could teleportation really exist, and what would be the implications of it? Um, as far as whether it can exist, well, the jury's actually still out on that a little bit. Uh, there are some interesting bits of physics that suggest there might be something that might allow some sort of teleportation. But it's not clear that it would actually work at a macroscopic level at the size of a human being. And there are other things that would potentially allow getting from one place to another without going through the space in between involving warping space-time. Uh, but that tends to require huge masses or huge energy and tends to have other issues like uh, uh, distortion and spaghettification and other things that would be generally deleterious to the health of anything that was traveling through this uh, shortcut, uh, usually a wormhole, but uh, potentially there could be some other mechanism for making such a shortcut. Now, uh, when you get down to it, there's a couple of ways that I can think of that you could do something resembling teleportation at the macroscopic level. Uh, the first would be uh, some sort of uh, mechanism that, that uh, allows you to pass the matter through some sort of situation that's out of phase with regular reality. Uh, now, I don't know of any way to actually do that or anything in physics that would allow such a thing to exist, but given the chaos at the quantum level and, and various research that's ongoing into things like string theory, maybe there's something there. Uh, maybe, maybe we can somehow sidestep uh, the uh, regular universe and, and wander around uh, you know, outside of space-time and then plop back down somewhere else. Uh, so that we can manage to travel without crossing the intervening distances. Or maybe we can somehow uh, instantaneously um, uh, get uh, a lump of matter up to light speed, send it to a receiver, and instantaneously drop it back down to a normal non-light uh, speed type velocity. Uh, and that would mean that the for the thing that's transported, no time would pass, but it would still be restricted by light speed, and it wouldn't break causality as we know. It wouldn't break physics, necessarily. The question is, how do you get something to light speed, with something with mass to light speed, without using an infinite amount of energy? And we don't know of any way to do that. If you have mass, you can't go at light speed. If you don't have mass, you have to go at light speed, it appears to be the rule. So, uh, you've got also the possibility of measure the object perfectly, transmit that information to the other side, and then recreate the object on the other side. And then you've got the question, is the measuring destructive or uh, benign? And if it's benign, do you still have the object at the other side at the at the start when you're done? What do you do with that object? If if you're measuring the object and then making a copy of it at the other side, that's not teleportation. That's replication. That that's the Star Trek replicator. Uh, and if the measurement is destructive, what's the point? Because you're still having to build the copy at the other side. 
So you're still basically a replicator, and once you've measured the pattern once, you don't need to do it again. You just make as many copies as you need, as long as you have the energy to do it. So uh, that kind of teleportation just doesn't make any sense. Uh, now, maybe teleporting a biological organism uh, might have some different effects. Like maybe, maybe the consciousness will go to the other, uh, the copy that's produced if the original is destroyed. If that's the case, then you've got some sort of teleportation, and then it could make some sense. But you'd have to convince me really hard with some really difficult to produce evidence that destroying my body on this side and producing a new one on the other side isn't going to actually just kill me and have a copy of me on the other side that doesn't know any different. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, some science fiction stories have dealt with exactly that conundrum uh, and others have dealt with exactly the situation that comes up if the uh, teleporter just makes copies. So. Uh, there are interesting implications in both cases, and uh, quite frankly, I wouldn't volunteer for, for testing any kind of teleporter like that. I certainly wouldn't. Um, it, it would just be, well, dumb. Uh, you know, I certainly wouldn't want to die just to have a copy of me somewhere else. You know, that's just, that, that violates survival instincts, right? Uh, now the so that means that if that's the only way we can do a teleportation type thing, then teleportation isn't going to be possible. Um, if you know, unless there is something to the notion of a soul that's disconnected to the physical body, and I don't think that's going to turn out to be the case. Um, tragically, I'd love to be wrong about that, but I don't think that will turn out to be the case when someone finally does crack what consciousness actually is. Now. Uh, that leaves, uh, so, you know, and that leaves aside the energy budget that you'd need for something like that, which would be absolutely immense. So I, I think it would still be more practical to build massive generation ships to get people from one planet to another. Uh, you know, it, it, you know, one star to another. It, it just seems sensible that that's going to be more practical from an energy uh, requirement standpoint. Uh, maybe not, uh, but still, uh, it seems like it's going to be a lot more practical and require a lot less stuff that's totally, uh, well, magic. Um, now, if we could somehow sidestep space-time, well, then we've got hyperdrive, and we don't need teleportation. So maybe that's what hyperdrive would be, is teleportation. Um, you know, faster than light travel. Um, and if, we've, if we could do that, okay, great. Now we've cracked faster than light as well, and that breaks physics. So I don't think that's actually going to turn out to be possible either. Uh, but if it does, well, that will be uh, truly interesting, and it'll raise some interesting questions about um, about well, where are the aliens? And that's a that's a topic for another time, and it's it's a, an interesting one. But you know, if if we do manage to crack it and manage to do faster than light travel, the question really is, where are the aliens? Why haven't they visited us? Um, with the only reasonable option being we're the first uh, in that case. Um, and it's an, it's an interesting question. Uh, so realistically, uh, the sidestepping space-time argument and the uh, uh, take apart, measure, etc., both of them fall apart, uh, either for energy reasons or because... Well, I, what's the physics that allows it? Uh, or because of the uncertainty principle where you can't measure things accurately enough to make a duplicate. So, okay, you've got that. Uh, but maybe there's some thing that we don't know about that would allow it. Well, maybe. But until somebody finds the physics that would 
allow for that, we have to assume that it's not likely that, that it, it's possible. So in the real world, I think there's enough issues with teleportation that it's not going to happen, uh, at least not any time in the uh, even unforeseeable future. Um, it just, it's, it's just too far divorced from what we know of physics to be believable. And that's really what it all comes down to. Now, I'm not saying that we should all stop uh, reading and writing and watching and so on stuff that has teleportation in it. It's perfectly fine in a magical setting, and it's perfectly fine in a science fiction setting that's already doing things like faster than light travel or is, is already uh, positing something that isn't actually the real world. Um, and maybe it's a case of a story where you're going, well, what, how would teleportation impact things or, or any number of things like that. Uh, it's perfectly fine in a story and, you know, I'll continue to enjoy a lot of those stories just because of the story itself, not the, uh, not the fact that it's uh, got teleportation in it and that's uh, obviously going to be the future. No, I don't really believe that we'll ever crack teleportation and uh, quite frankly, uh, I don't think I'm all that upset about that actually. I'm more annoyed that we probably will never crack faster than light travel because I don't think that's possible either, but still. It's the universe we live in, and we wouldn't be here if the universe didn't behave the way it does. So, eh, 601, you know. Um, you know, I, and we can imagine it all we want, and we can enjoy the stories in our imagination. So, is it a bad idea to have stuff like that in our stories? Nah, I don't think so. As long as we understand that this stuff is not actually real. And that if we are trying to develop something like that, that we have realistic expectations and we understand that we're going down a road that might well be a dead end. Uh, I'm not saying we shouldn't try and research it either because many times in human history, someone's gone down that path that was patently ridiculous, that, that obviously couldn't be right, and then shown that the accepted wisdom was wrong, like the discovery of... Uh, of the that well I guess like the discovery that ether didn't exist for instance uh, massively uh, paradigm shifting discovery um, so uh, maybe we'll have one of those massive discoveries that totally changes everything at some point uh, in the future and if we do and it does turn out that teleportation faster than light travel or any of that stuff is possible great if not, well, that's the universe for you. Anyway, uh, that's really all I've got to say on the topic uh, for now. Uh, I did actually record another version of this that ran considerably longer with considerably more tangents, so uh, I've spared you that. Uh, anyway, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications. Uh, if you liked the video or you didn't, uh, leave a like or a dislike. Apparently it helps with exposure. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.